What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.2 beta 2 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. And this was released for all devices, not just the Apple intelligence compatible devices like we saw with beta one. Now along with this release, Apple also dropped iPad OS 18.2 beta 2, Mac OS Sequoia 15.2 beta 2, along with watch OS 11.2 beta 1, tvOS 18.2 beta 1, and visionOS 2.2 beta 1. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS 18.2 beta 2. So starting off with the size, you can see it came in at 1.4 gigabytes from beta to beta. So I was on beta 1 before, and it was 1.4 gigs to go to beta 2. So a relatively large size. Let's check out the build number. So in our settings, general about 18.2. The new build is 22C5125E. So we do still have an E at the end of the build number, which indicates we still have at least a few betas to go before the final release. And if we go back and check out the modem firmware version, that is 1.21.01 on the 16 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.2 beta 2? And you probably noticed this right when I went into the settings to show you the build number, but we have a change to the icons inside of our settings. So it now shows the dark mode icons when we have those set on our home screen. So this does work for tinted icons as well. It will mirror your icons in the settings even if you're in light mode, for example. So if I have dark mode icons, but I'm in light mode, it still shows the dark mode icons. Now, if I put my device into dark mode, you can see a slight change here as well. So they have this kind of white border to them, kind of like a glow to the icons now. Obviously, these look a lot better in dark mode, but you can see that is a new change here with 18.2 beta 2. And if I tint my icons red and we go into our settings, you can see that the settings icons are all also tinted red. We also have a couple of changes when it comes comes to the chat GPT integration. So if you go into your settings and go to Apple intelligence and Siri, and then go down here to where it says chat GPT. First off, you'll notice in the settings itself, it now says extensions instead of extend Apple intelligence and Siri. And then when you go into this section it now says use chat GPT up at the top, and we don't have the glyph icon to the left. And then below that, we now have a title that says chat GPT account, and it says sign in right there. Whereas before it just said chat GPT paid and you could sign in or out of your accounts right there and then we also have this section called advanced capabilities so it shows your daily limit I am currently under the limit but there's also now a button to upgrade to chat GPT plus from the settings application itself. And it says you'll have access to ChatGPT's advanced capabilities until you reach your daily limit. Additional requests will use the basic version for up to 24 hours. And if you tap on upgrade to ChatGPT Plus, it will take you to this page right here. And when you tap on subscribe, it will just take you to the OpenAI page where you can log in or sign up to your OpenAI account. And you do also get new splash screens when you go into this ChatGPT section. So it basically just tells you what ChatGPT can do on iOS 18.2 with Apple Intelligence. So it says it integrates with Siri, more visual intelligence, composed text and writing tools, and it works with a ChatGPT account. And when you tap on next, it tells you about the privacy and ChatGPT, which was what a lot of people were concerned about. And it says you're in control. You decide what gets shared with ChatGPT, and you can turn ChatGPT off at any time in settings, and you can also use it with an account. And it makes sure to let you know that if you do not sign into ChatGPT, your requests are going to be anonymous and will not be used to train OpenAI models. And speaking of ChatGPT, there's also a slight change to when you're actually using ChatGPT with Siri. So let me ask just a basic question. So you'll see that it says, check important info for mistakes now, whereas before it said mistakes can occur, verify details. Now you might have also noticed that when it says working, it now says working with ChatGPT. So I'm going to ask something else. Tell me a cool story about Steve Jobs. And you can see it says working with ChatGPT instead of just working now. And you'll also notice that I got a voice kind of response here from Siri on beta one. But now with beta two, I do not get a response. I don't get any type of verbal cue that ChatGPT answered my question. You'll also notice that the ChatGPT glyph icon and the check important info for mistakes, it stays sticky at the bottom. Whereas before in beta one, you'd have to scroll all the way down to the end to see 
that prompt. It's also more bold now than it was beforehand. There's also some changes with visual intelligence. So this is the new splash screen that I got here in beta two. So it says visual intelligence with camera control, learn about the objects and places around you and get more information about what you see. Now, if we go ahead and tap on continue on that and go into the visual intelligence here, you'll notice some changes as well. So first off, it looks like the orb around the camera changes colors more frequently. Also, you'll notice that when we have down there, the ask and search, they now have a black background and text beneath it to help you better understand what these functions actually do. They are also a little bit larger, so they're easier to press now. So if I take my camera and point it at the ask button right there, we go ahead and tap on ask. You'll notice a difference here as well. So again, it says working with ChatGPT up top, up top instead of just working. And also down here at the bottom, it used to say follow up with ChatGPT in that dark you know, border there or that dark background, I should say, and a Apple intelligence like logo for chat GPT, but now it's more in line with chat GPT's branding. So it's just the black and white, and we have the white box down at the bottom and also a much larger X than what we saw with beta one. And again, you can see with the answer up top that chat GPT is now more bold. And also it says check important info for mistakes, just like we saw with the Siri integration. And also up here in the top right, when you go to copy, we no longer have that little gray background behind it. Also, if you were to take a picture of something, instead of choosing one of the two options right away, you'll notice that we now have search right there. Before that was hidden inside of this three dot menu, it was right there, search, but now it's on the main section. And when you tap on the three dots, it now shows everything there as well. Also in the notes application, there's a new way to access the image wand. So before, if you went to the markup right here and then just went to your image wand, and you can see that we do have a new pop-up there. If you just drew a circle, it would create an image based on the text that was above. But now there's another way to access that. So you don't have to go into the toolbar at all. You could just select the text. So let's select everything and swipe all the way over. And we now have an option for creating image if you tap on create image it will use that image wand feature and create an image based on the text that you had written inside of that note so you can see this is what it will look like it will create an image using image wand pretty cool and we also have a few splash screens so we have one for freeform so it talks about image playground create a scene enhanced editing and more we have one for the journal application, so nothing new mentioned in here, but we do have one for journal, and then also one for podcasts. Now, if you have an iPhone 16 series, we have a couple of changes to the camera control button. So if you go up to your settings and go to camera, and then to camera control, we now have a new toggle up top for AE slash AF lock. So auto exposure and auto focus lock can now be achieved with the camera control button with a light press. So let me show you how that works. So if I light press and hold on the camera control button, you can see that it will now activate the auto exposure and auto focus lock. So now if I were to put my hand right here, you'll notice that it will not focus because the focus is locked and same with the exposure. If I were to try to put you know, a bright light here, it's not going to change the exposure because it is locked and that will unlock once I let go. And now you can see it will focus on, you know, another area. And then we also have a change inside of our accessibility settings. So if we go into settings, accessibility, and then scroll down, you'll see that it now shows camera button title. So Apple forgot to change this right here. It's supposed to just say camera control, of course, but that is a bug. That is a beta bug, a classic beta bug. But now if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll notice that we have a new section for double click speed. So we now have a double click speed, not just a double light press speed. So it looks like Apple is continuing to add on to the camera control button, which is great. We have a pretty big change to the find my application. So we have a new splash screen here that tells you what's new and it says share item location get help finding a lost item by sharing its location with an airline or trusted person they will be able to see the location of your item on a map so if I go over to one of my air tags you can see this new section that says lost air tag and it says show contact info and share item location 
Now, if you go into share item location, you get this new splash screen here that says get help finding your lost air tag by sharing its location with an airline or a trusted person. And once you tap on that, it says item location ready to share. And you can tap right here to copy the link. And it says you can share that location link and it will show you where that device is. This is huge. And also, if you go right here, we also have the show contact info. I've not seen this animation, this little splash screen here either. So it says tap to reveal information. Hold this air tag close to the top of your phone to open a website with more information and allow others to get in touch. Now, when you tap on continue, that's where you can add in your phone number and other personal information. So these are both major features when it comes to air tags. And I just think this is amazing. And it's going to help a lot of people get a lot of their stolen devices or stolen bags, whatever the case may be back since the airlines can now have, you know, direct or not even just airlines, police even can have a direct link to, you know, that location on the map without having to have the person with them with their iPhone, basically just telling them where their device is located. Now, also with iOS 18.2 beta 2, if you're not on an Apple intelligence device, you will still get access to the new mail application where you can categorize all of your mail automatically. So your device is now going to automatically categorize your mail into primary transactions, updates and promotions if you have them. And you can see over here is the promotions in red. And of course, if you tap on any of those, it will just switch over to all mail. You could also do a swipe like so to get access to all of your mail. And you will also see some application icons, or I should say some company icons here to the left now. So this works a lot for banks, for Apple, for a lot of the big companies, you'll now start seeing their image right here when you get an email from that company. So this is great. You can also tap on the three dots up top and change this back to the list view if you don't want the categories showing right there. And if you go to about categories, it will show you some details about those as well. And you can reset the manual categorization. There's also a new glyph icon in the control center for type to Siri. So before it just showed a big Apple intelligence logo. Now it shows a keyboard with a small gray Apple intelligence logo in the bottom right corner in the image playground application, which a lot of people started getting access after beta two, by the way. So if you did not get access in beta one, check here in beta two, because you might very well have access to that. But we have a few very minor changes here in beta two, nothing really substantial. But if you look down at the very bottom, the text has changed. It's now just that one sentence where it says image playground may create unexpected results. Whereas before it said images may vary based on description, personalization, or photo selected. So it's just a more concise version. You'll also notice that the plus icon here to the right is now a gradient, whereas before it was just white. And if you tap on the plus icon, you'll notice that we have a little line break here beneath the style and that sentence right there. Before there was no line break there. It was kind of just right after those image styles. And when you tap on describe an image, you'll notice that we have more of a gradient. So it shows up more in the keyboard now, whereas before it did not, it just showed a kind of gradient here in the text field. But now it just is a little bit more dramatic. And if you go into your previously created images and you long press before you had the option to copy, add a caption and duplicate right there. But now in 18.2 beta two, if you go into here, you now have an X up in the top right corner to X out of that image, whereas before it was just an arrow. And then we have a three dot menu here, which allows you to copy, duplicate and add caption. You couldn't do that before again, unless you held on the image and got to it that way. And there's also a little feedback up there as well, which allows you to share feedback on that image created. In the shortcuts application, we now have new actions for the fitness applications. We have open fitness settings, open award, open session history, and open trophy case. Now, as far as the performance goes with beta two, I am running a quick Geekbench six test to see how we score compared to beta one. But I will say that with beta one, my very first hour using it, I already had a random respring, but here with beta two, I did not have that happen. So, so far, it does seem a little bit better than beta one. I will let you know for sure after using this software throughout the week. And I'll let you know in my Apple weekly episode on Saturday, just how much better it is than beta one, if at all. Anyways, we scored a 34 34 on the single core and an 84 96 on the multi core. So if you compare that to beta one, you can see it is slightly lower. But of course, my device is very warm right now from installing and going through the software here in beta two. So we'll run that again later on this week and see how it compares to beta one in that test. Now, when it comes to the battery life, I would expect battery life to slightly improve here with beta two because 
for me, it was not good at all in beta one. So I'm hoping to see an improvement in terms of battery life here with beta two, especially when it comes to image playground that drained a lot of battery in beta one. And I would assume that will get better here with beta two. But once again, I will let you know for sure in Apple weekly on Saturday. Now, as far as what to expect next from Apple, next up is going to be iOS 18.2 beta three. Now it could very well be switching over to a weekly release schedule since we're now, you know, available to all devices here on 18.2. So if that were the case, we could get 18.2 beta three as early as the week of November 11th. Now the 11th itself is veterans day and Apple does not typically release software on a holiday. So we might not be seeing that on the 11th, but we could see it sometime later on that week, maybe the 12th or the 13th. So since we're on an e-build, I would assume that we're going to get maybe three more betas. So maybe a beta three, a beta four, and then potentially a beta five on the week of December 2nd, because Apple does not typically release software on the week of Thanksgiving, which is on November 28th. So we'll have to wait and see. Of course, Apple is unpredictable. Those are just my predictions. Nobody really knows what Apple's going to do. But as far as the final public release of iOS 18.2, we could see that as early as the week of December 2nd or the week of December 9th. And the, I think the latest that we're going to see that is the week of December 16th. It will be for sure within the first three weeks of December. But if I had to guess, I would say that within the first two weeks of December is when we will see 18.2 get released to everybody. So that is iOS 18.2 beta two. If there's any features that I missed, I will be covering those in the Apple weekly episode on Saturday as I always do. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS 18 videos. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.